Hi guys, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about the International Baccalaureate, otherwise known as the IB. Ever since I started doing the program around two years ago, I've been getting tons and tons of questions about literally every single aspect of it. So I figured since I just recently got my results, why not sit down and just do a whole video dedicated to my experience? I'm gonna tell you guys some of my tips if you're considering doing it. Hopefully this will help you make the choice, etc. So yeah, I wrote down everything that I'm gonna cover in this video. There's a lot of information, so if you don't care about certain parts, I will put the timestamps for certain sections in the description box so you can skip forward. Oh, Bee's here. Oh, I feel bad. She's just gonna watch me film this video. Fuck. Do you wanna say hi? P.E. <laughs> teacher outfit. Yeah, I'll be. Hi. <laughs> Oh, also keep in mind that this is all based on my personal experience. Not everyone's gonna have the same opinions as me, but this is just like what I learned throughout the process. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, first up, for those of you guys who don't know what it is, I thought I would explain kind of what the principle is. Basically, it's a two-year program that's known as being one of the most difficult high school programs that you can do. Within those two years, you take six different subjects three at a higher level and three at a standard level. There's six different subject groups that you can choose from, five of which are mandatory, and then the sixth is an art. So if you wanted to take an art as your sixth subject, you can do that, but if you wanted to, you could also take a second science or another humanities. The subjects themselves would be quite manageable, but I think what makes it the most difficult is the extra requirements, which consist of fulfilling creativity, activity, and service requirements, as well as doing a 4,000 word extended essay and a theory of knowledge class, which is kind of comparable to philosophy, I think. Your classes are graded on a one to seven point system, seven being the highest and one technically being the lowest, but any grade under four is considered a failing grade. So the grades that you get in your subjects are then all added up to make up 42 out of 45 final points and the three remaining points being calculated through how you did on your theory of knowledge class and your extended essay. Unlike courses like the AP or GCSEs or anything like that, it's very, very highly based on knowledge application. So if you take AP, you'd know that you kind of study the information and then it's multiple choice. You just kind of like memorize and regurgitate it. But the IB is very much based on being able to analyze and apply everything that you've learned, which can be good for some students, but obviously negative for others who don't really do well with that sort of thing. The combination of the six different subjects along with the extra things that you have to do is just supposed to make you a more well-rounded student overall and give you a global perspective on the world. But I feel like that effect kind of depends on like what school you go to and how your school teaches the IB. Yeah, so that's what it is. <laughs> now moving on to what I took. I did higher level economics, English literature and theater, and then I did SL, math, I take German B and bio. <laughs> I was predicted a 44 out of 45 with sevens in every subject except for English literature. That's not exactly what I got in the final though and I did actually film a results reaction when the results came out a couple days ago. So I will insert that right here. Okay, my results came out about 30 minutes ago but I haven't checked yet because I figured the site would crash any- <laughs> Fuck. Because I figured the site would crash and I was like, you know what, there's no rush, it's fine but I'm about to look. I feel like I haven't been that stressed, but like now I'm starting to freak out because I'm like, okay, it's fine. Whatever I get is gonna be fine. And I worked hard and it doesn't matter. It's okay. We'll be fine. Fuck, I'm scared. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, the website is loading. My heart is racing. <laughs> Fuck, it crashed. <laughs> oh my god, it loaded. I'm scared to scroll down. <gasps> oh, sh- Okay. Okay. I'm okay with that. I'm good. I'm good. Wait, but I'm surprised. I did not- It's not what I thought it would be. I dropped in math, which I- was kind of thinking might happen. But I dropped in theater, which I didn't expect. But I got the three extra points for the EENTOK, which I wasn't sure about. Okay, breathe, breathe. 
I don't know if that was anticlimactic or not. I wasn't like paying attention because it just crashed. Yay! <laughs> Fuck IB. Just kidding. So yeah, overall, I ended up receiving a 42 out of 45. And I think the worldwide average this year was 29 points. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'm kind of sad I dropped in theater. But other than that, like I'm very satisfied with what I got. I know when it comes to choosing subjects, it can be a little bit nerve wracking because at least like for my school, they put quite a lot of pressure on what you end up picking in the end because it can affect your university applications. In my opinion, I think you should base your subject choices on three main things. First of all, what you're planning on doing in the future. If you have any sort of idea of what you're already planning on studying, then definitely take that in mind because that can, your subject choices can reflect quite a lot when you come to applying to universities. That didn't really make grammatical sense, but you get what I mean. And then also just what you're passionate about, what you're interested in, and what you're good at. I think the weightage that you put on those three different things definitely depends on what you plan on studying in the future. If you already know you want to go into med, I'm pretty sure they're quite strict with you having to do higher level bio and higher level chemistry during the IB. And not doing those will definitely prevent you from being able to apply to quite a lot of med courses, especially in the UK. For me personally, I had an interest in studying econs and I know higher level math is definitely recommended for that, but I still took SL because I know my strengths don't really lie in math and I don't think I would have been able to do as well if I did HL math. So that choice was based a lot more on my skill set. I personally also know that I'm not a great exam student, so picking a group six subject was really attractive to me because I knew that that was only coursework based, which I ended up dropping in, but it's fine. <laughs> From personal experience though, I would highly recommend one anyway, just because I feel like they're something that kind of distracts you from the super sit down in a class type of setting. How well you do in the IB can very much depend on if you play to your strengths when it comes to your subject choices. So definitely keep that in mind. That being said, do your research, but don't stress too much about your subject choices. At the end of the day, they matter, but they're not gonna be the end of the world. And if you don't end up liking a subject, you can always switch or drop in the first couple weeks of school. Yeah, that's all I have to say about subject choices. Moving on to my extended essay. I think overall, it's not as bad as you expect. You think it's a 4,000 word essay and it's like long as fuck, but it's really not as long as you think it is. I did an EE in theater, which I picked because I knew that I would have a lot of freedom when it comes to picking my topic. With theater, there's such a large range of topics that you can focus on as long as you keep it theater based, which is kind of what attracted me to it. Again, the subject itself should be based on something that you're good at. So if you're not a huge researcher, then pick something like math or English that you most likely won't have to do a whole bunch of research for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> My final topic ended up being the use of this theater style called Theater of the Oppressed within prisons and if it helps self-reflection within convicts, which I loved. I was very happy with my choice. Obviously, when it comes to this, pick a topic that you're interested in because you're gonna have to spend hours upon hours reading and researching on it. Despite the stress, I quite enjoyed doing my EE because I was really interested in what I was writing about. It was a struggle and a half to get done, but Part of that was also my fault because I didn't manage my time properly. I'm a huge advocate for taking the summer as a break from doing schoolwork, but I think the EE is one thing that you should start doing the summer between grade 11 and grade 12 because you can get a huge head start on that if you do it during that time. Starting your EE early also gives you the benefit of being able to adjust your question, which is a really big thing because I think a lot of people end up changing their question throughout the process. And in general, don't be afraid to change your question. I ended up changing mine like three days before submitting it, which is not something I would recommend, but it helped me narrow down what I was writing about a lot more and actually made my question something feasible that I could answer. So if you need to change your topic or narrow it down, do it because it will help you in the long run. The EE grading can be a little bit difficult, so I recommend literally just keeping a rubric next to you at all times that you're working on it so that by the time you get to the end, you've made sure that you've hit all of the points you possibly can. That way you know you've done all the things that you need to do throughout writing it. Yeah, I think that's everything for the EE. Next up, CAS. A lot of you guys asked me what I did for my CAS. So I wrote down all the activities that I did. For creativity, I did MUN. I was head of photography for the school yearbook. I worked backstage at two different theater productions. And then I was also a part of this club called Epiphany, which is basically just a mixed media arts group at my school. 
For activity, I played touch all throughout grade 11 and then I'd used physical therapy as my last activity because I had a back problem in the beginning of grade 12 and I couldn't do anything else. And then finally for service, I taught English to a group of exploited migrant workers for a year. I also volunteered at an elephant shelter in Thailand for a week. And then finally I acted as treasurer for a group in our school that raised money that was sent to an NGO that helped kids in Pakistan get an education. I'm very lucky because the school I went to had a lot of different options for things that you could get involved in and had a lot of extracurricular activities which made fulfilling my cash requirements very, very easy. I know in other schools that's not always the case. I recommend going outside of school, trying to see what NGOs and stuff are available that you can volunteer with in the area to fulfill your service requirements. I know there's a lot of places that I could have gone to outside of school that would have also allowed me to fulfill that aspect of my CAS. I'm personally not a huge sports person, but I was able to fulfill my activity by doing touch, which I just kind of stepped out of my comfort zone to try. But obviously if you're not interested in trying anything new, you can always do something at like a local gym and just get a supervisor there to oversee the work that you do. One thing that will make it a lot easier for your supervisor to see exactly where you're fulfilled your learning outcomes, which is what you're supposed to complete by the end of CAS, is directly referencing them within your reflections. I was kind of stupid and I didn't realize that I should have done this until like the end of grade 12, but writing your reflections and just pinpointing exactly the number, which like n the number of the um, learning outcome that you're referencing to in that reflection makes it a lot easier to also be able to talk about it in your final CAS interview. Next up, is TOK. I know a lot of people in my grade did not enjoy TOK, but I think people also spend too much time worrying about how much they dislike it rather than just doing it. The more you get into it in class and the more you participate in the discussions and really consider the points that are being brought up, the easier it's gonna be when it comes to actually analyzing. What? <laughs> One thing I highly, highly recommend doing is keeping a glossary all throughout the year that you're studying it. My teacher provided me with one that was easy to fill out. I can probably link something like this down below. I don't know if it's provided by the IB or not. Having the definitions of words like procedural knowledge or a priori knowledge or personal knowledge on hand at all times makes it really easy for you to incorporate them into your final coursework, which will make you seem a lot smarter in the long run. We also got given this TOK concepts and terminology sheet, which was really, really helpful. Keeping something like this next to you at all times when you're working on your essay and presentation also makes it really, really easy to incorporate the concepts that make up TOK. These are simple topics like generalization, paradigm shifts, uh, authority, selection bias, things that you probably know of but will be a lot easier to think of when you have this right next to you. Oh my god, here's my essay. Cute. Just make sure when you're doing your present, when you're picking the topics that you want to talk about, in your essay and your presentation, pick niche and unique things. That way you're not just repeating the same things that someone else has analyzed in the past. Also, use the exemplars that the IBO provides on their website, because those can be really good at just seeing what type of analysis you should be doing. Don't use those random crappy websites that you find online, because a lot of the time they are not a good reflection of what TOK should be. I'm not an expert in TOK, but you know. Finally, before we get into the Q&A section of this video, I actually texted a couple of my other friends who had different subject combinations from me and did really well in the IB as well to give some of their biggest advice and things that they wish they would have known before they started. So they each filmed little clips that I will insert right here. This is how many times I have tried to film this clip. I honestly have mad respect for you, Hannah, because I can't seem to speak coherently. Anyway, hi, I'm Naz. I know you've probably been getting quite academic based pieces of advice guys so i think the biggest piece of advice that i wish that i got before i started the ib was to find your sense of balance i think a lot of people think that in order to succeed in the ib is all you have to do is study that is absolutely not true hannah and i were definitely crackheads we took some time off we hung out together i had a lot of activities outside class that i found really relaxing such as dancing i think People need to realize that as long as you manage your time well, which I'm pretty sure you've heard already, you have plenty of time to take these opportunities in order to focus on yourself. And ultimately, that's how you're going to succeed. Hi guys, so I think my biggest tip that I learned like at a very late like period of the IEB um, is to definitely never wait for like a test or for an assignment to 
fulfill like the admin part of your academic subject if that makes any sense so what i mean by that is like never wait for a test to like write your notes or to understand something fully like try and do that what like whilst you're learning that specific concept or that specific chapter in your class because it'll just reduce your stress um during busy periods of the month where you have many tests and like ias and ees and drafts of essays to do as well um and it will help you be organized for your final exams. So yeah, that is my biggest tip. I think my biggest piece of advice would be to clarify with your teachers what's going on with your coursework, so your internal assessments or your extended essays before you leave for your summer break, just so that you know what kind of work you should be putting in and you don't end up leaving everything to the last minute like I did. Hopefully those were a little bit helpful. I think it's always good to get a different perspective because everyone's experience with IB is a little bit different. Finally, I'm gonna be answering a couple more specific questions that you guys had. The first question I got was, what did you learn from the experience? I think the biggest thing I took away from it and the biggest skill that I improved was my critical thinking. Just being able to analyze and write has helped me so much because I think it's important to be able to take information and actually apply it rather than just memorizing it. Someone else asked, which year was the hardest? From my experience, grade 12 was the most difficult. But I know a lot of people did struggle in the end of grade 11 because they had a lot of IAs and stuff due then. Because I did IB theater, that coursework was due in grade 12. So I struggled a little bit more in grade 12. How do you balance social life with schoolwork? I don't think there's one specific answer to this. When it came to those months where I had a lot of coursework due, what I would do is I would sit down in the beginning of the week and I would literally just plan out my days. I would plan by task rather than hour because I just felt like that was more efficient for me. And I basically would just write down like, on Monday, I'm gonna finish the introduction to my EE. On Tuesday, I'm gonna finish the conclusion to my bio IA. And I think that kind of kept me on track. By planning that out, I was able to leave enough time to socialize. I know a lot of you guys are starting to go into the IB right now and have also asked me what you can do to prepare. Technically, you can start going through the curriculum and looking through textbooks in the summer before you begin. But in my opinion, that's not really necessary. One thing that I would recommend is more like skill-based and logistical stuff. So like learning how to cite ahead of time so that you don't end up wasting a bunch of time researching how to do your MLA citations when you're done with your EE. Somebody else asked which subjects are the hardest. Technically, I think most people say that stuff like HL math, chemistry, physics are the hardest subjects, but I think it's also highly dependent on you as a person and what you're good at. If you're better at essay-based subjects, then obviously you're gonna struggle with those subjects, but if you're more of a logical thinker, then HL math and physics is not gonna be as difficult for you. So yeah, it all depends. Um, somebody else asked, does it help with uni applications? I think generally the IB curriculum pushes you to be more of like a well-rounded student because you do have to complete all of these extracurricular things. It also helped me quite a lot with Canada because I'm gonna be going into U1 instead of U0, and I'm hoping that I can complete my degree in three years instead of four. That system won't always apply. I know some countries value the IB a lot more than others do, so it really just depends on where you end up going. Somebody else asked for useful study websites. I didn't really use that many study websites. I loved BioNinja, which helped a lot for biology. And then for Econs, I watched quite a lot of Econs YouTubers because I felt like hearing something explained to me helped quite a lot, so I really liked Jacob Clifford and Econ plus doll. I don't know how to say it, but those two are quite good. And finally, was it worth it? Do you think IB was worth it? I think IB is, I mean, obviously it's really hard. Yeah. And it's a lot, but it teaches you so, it's so much more than academics and it teaches you so many life skills. Like IB students are gonna go into university so prepared. Because yeah. we're so used to doing so many, like a million things all at once. Like I wouldn't want to do any of the other ones. Like no. even though IB sucked, I don't want to do AP. No. I don't want to do A levels. No. Like it's easier, but I don't know. It's up to you. I know a lot of people walked out of IB doing really well. And a lot of people also walked out of it having had very many mental breakdowns that probably don't think that it was worth it. So it's all a matter of like who you are as a person, I guess. If you're considering doing it, obviously do more research than just watching this video. And yeah, that's it for my advice. Hopefully this was helpful to any of you guys who are going into IB or are currently still doing it. 
If you guys have any more questions or need advice on anything else, then definitely leave your questions in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you guys. Yeah, I love you guys all to the moon and back and I will see you in my next video. Bye.